What's good YouTube? Welcome to another small James coding tutorial where today we're going to be talking about cloud functions specifically on Google Cloud Functions but this applies to AWS Lambda functions as well and also serverless web infrastructure and how that system all comes together. But to really understand what serverless computing is and how cloud functions work the first thing we're going to do is look at a traditional server that I have just here and I can run this server by typing npm run dev. So now we have our server started and I can come into this rest file just here and type in get http slash slash local host 8383. And if I go to that particular URL just here, hello banana and provide in an ID. So I'm just going to say James123. Now what I can do is send that request and we can see that I get an adequate response that says welcome to banana club your id is that so this is a traditional server setup in this particular case i'm using node.js as a javascript rom tie and express as a lightweight web server framework i'm initializing my server and in here what i can do is after i've told my app to listen to a particular port i can specify a whole series of routes and now i could do get routes post routes patch routes delete routes or whatever and i can also specify the query parameters for each particular route so as i've kind of mentioned this is a traditional server setup where essentially i'm creating an endpoint or a location a route so in this particular case the route is this and what i'm doing is when someone sends a network request to this particular route I'm executing this function. Now the question becomes, what if you could avoid initializing a server every time you wanted to set up a functionality to occur when you communicate with a particular endpoint? So in this particular case, this is our endpoint. Well, what if I could just remove all of this? I don't have to set up my server or anything, and I can just execute this function when I hit this endpoint. Well, that's where cloud computing comes in and we can use cloud functions, which are a type of serverless functionality. And what we can do is for a particular cloud function, we can just have the body of the function and the cloud function, the serverless computing allocates us a URL or a route that we can use to communicate and access or call that particular function. So here I am now inside of Google Cloud Platform's console and I've just initialized their $300 free trial for all of their cloud computing services. And so what I'm going to do is come to the search bar and type in cloud functions. And here we can see cloud functions comes up. Now I'm going to create a function. And so it's telling me that I need to enable it. And so what I'm going to do is enable all of these. And now that that's all done, what I can do is set up the environment for my function. So I'm just going to call it demonstration function. We can set the region. We can set the trigger type. So in this particular case, I'm just going to go for an HTTP request and we're going to allow unauthenticated invocations of this particular function. And you can see here that we're being allocated a URL. This URL is just going to be that particular route that we can use to call this function. So if we come back to our code here, it's just going to be a combination of our, well, essentially, it's just going to be this. We can do a get request to that particular link and we'll see how that works in a second. So for now, I'm going to copy that, come back into my code and we're going to set up another get request for that particular route. And in the rest file, I can separate requests by using the triple pound key. So now in here, that's all fine. We can go save. We can also specify our runtime build and all this kind of stuff. So if you wanted to allocate more memory because it's a bigger function, you're essentially setting up a virtual computer. And in the background, as much as this might be serverless technology, Google is allocating you a server and just doing all of the server initialization so that you can just define the function and have the endpoint and you don't have to worry about any of that server configuration. And so that's why it's technically called serverless, even though under the hood, it's just run by a server that you yourself are not initializing. So here I can also specify a number of instances or anything like that, add environment variables. I don't have to worry about any of that. So I'm going to go next and the timeout is important for long computations. So you can change that depending on how intensive your timeout is going, how intensive your function call needs to be. 
So now I can click next and in here we can see that we have a runtime, we have an entry point, we have an inline editor and it honestly doesn't look too dissimilar from what we have defined in here. And if you recall, I said that the cloud function is removing everything except for the actual function itself. And this is the function here. The rest is configuring the server and the route. And if we look at just this function, it looks extremely identical to this particular one just here. So much so to the point where I could actually copy and paste this exact code just in here and displace all of that make sure that I've installed any relevant dependencies, which I don't have to do. You can do that by configuring the package.json file. So if you had dependencies, you could set it up so that it is identical to this particular file here. And the entry point becomes equivalent to the route. So if we come back to our code, here we have our specific route. So that's hello and that's banana. Where this is the domain. So I can copy this exact configuration hello and hello just like that and I can deploy this function and now it's going to create that function and the first time you might create the function it could take a little while because of something that's called a cold start so the computer is just taking its sweet time to configure everything and set it up for the first time as you start to use it more and more, these deployments become quicker and quicker. And while that's deploying, I can come back into my code. And for this particular test route, I can come back and configure that same route. So just like that, hello. It, the only thing that's changing is the domain and the domain is the allocation of the serverless tech. So the serverless tech will provide you with a domain instead of you having to configure a server, host it on a particular platform let's say Heroku and they allocate you a domain and so now that that is fully deployed we can come back into our code and we can test it out so we should once again be able to come into this trigger file copy this trigger URL so this is our URL come into our code that's just what this line here is we have our subdomain and we should be able to send that request and we can see that it actually makes successful communication with our cloud function without us having to initialize any kind of server how we can, however, we can see that it did not manage to read in that banana ID. And so the reason we actually got back this no banana provided ID is because some slight limitations is that in this particular case, we're going to have a harder time reading these params. And so instead, what I can actually do is just use it as a query. And now I can keep this exactly the same, redeploy this code but I can just change the way I formulate my request because in this particular case, I was using a dynamic parameter. Whereas now what I'm going to do is come down to the end and just have banana ID as James one, two, three, and use it as a query instead of a parameter. And so now if I check this deployment, it's just taking a little bit longer. And now that it's finished, we can come and test it. So if I send that request, we can see that it does indeed read our parameter. And we can guarantee that because if we look at the source code for it, we can see that if it didn't read that query, not parameter, it wouldn't be able to reach this line here. So it successfully read in that line and responded to us with a 200 request response. We can see that the response status code is indeed 200 and we have that successful message. And so now we run either it's equivalent with the benefit of the cloud function is that we didn't have to configure the entire server, deploy it and all of that kind of mumbo jumbo that in some applications is just not worth the time and energy. Instead, what you can do is just use the free trial on Google cloud functions, $400 worth of stuff, or even just pay for it. It's relatively inexpensive per function call. And you can just have a whole lot of functions for specific logic that you want to execute and you allocate a virtual machine to do it. And so the moral of the story is that serverless computing is realistically a bit of a farce because it's just someone else allocating that server. And so you can just focus on writing your function. They will 
allocate you an endpoint and you can specify your routes, just as we specified this entry point, that's your route and they give you a domain. And the other benefit of this is that often these cloud providers with their serverless functionalities will have like, for example, let's say you wanted to execute a cloud function every unit of time, you could set up a job system that just calls that particular endpoint and executes that cloud function. So ultimately it's just an alternative way of hosting your functional code that just sits right here. Who would have thought that serverless computing was just servers under the hood? But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've learned something, please like and sub. Super appreciated. Leave a comment down below what you'd like me to cover next. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace.